All right, guys, today we are going to be revisiting self-defense or defensive knives and kind of breaking it down into individual pieces and parts. So today, like I said, we're going to take you through the wide gambit of self-defense knives, tools, and just overall my perspectives on carrying knives for self-defense. So first off, I will say, of course, everything is always very fluid and dynamic depending on like which place in the world, which state you live in, and of course your genuine risk, like your honest risk of dangerous or deadly encounters. And of course too, it's also partially contingent on what you will be facing. You wouldn't want to go up against a bear with a knife, but you know, uh, against another human or a person trying to do you wrong, these knives tend to be pretty darn realistic. Now, of course, too, I think it's also worth stating, and as I quite literally live it, guns or firearms will always be the best first line of self-defense. And a lot of people probably in the comments already will be like, Matthew, you know, I can't have a firearm where I live, or maybe I'm of a particular type of segregated class that is not allowed to have firearms for whatever reason. Um, and honestly, too, what I would say to this and this isn't legal advice, so obviously don't take this as legal advice, but there are many different alternatives to firearms. I often recommend, and I, I say this now more because there are other videos published on this stuff, um, so you can definitely look it up on YouTube, but there are um, a lot of black powder firearms that are revolvers that, once again, are not cheap and, once again, are not always super accessible, but you know, once again, if your only option, like for me, I can go down to the gun store and buy any gun I want. If you're not as free to do so, I would look into things like air guns um, and or black powder firearms, because oftentimes, even in other countries, those things are not as restricted. And once again, you know, a 44 caliber revol revolver that's black powder will not be as powerful as a 44 magnum revolver and so there are some limitations there but once again if you're just looking at stopping someone who's trying to hurt you a lot of those older schooled systems are effective enough and so i would say train with them just as you would train like you know what makes a firearm like my glock 19 effective is that i train with it a lot so you could do that similarly to, with black powder firearms as well or air guns um, and granted there's not as many compact air guns out there but certainly you know it's worth looking at like say a truck gun it could be an air rifle so you know something like that can work so i will always prioritize things like ranged tools such as handguns and rifles over knives for self-defense just because if I don't have to get up close and personal I definitely don't want to and once again luckily we live in a time and an age where 3d printers exist so you can manufacture things you can still get black powder and black powder firearms in most places you can get air rifles and air rifle accessories and such in most places and so once again this isn't legal advice, but there are a lot of alternatives to knives that are, in my opinion, radically more effective for keeping yourself safe. So anyways, that is kind of my spiel about firearms and alternatives to direct controlled firearms um, out there. And once again, your local laws will vary depending on which country you live in, but there are a ton of countries that are not restrictive at or very limitedly restrictive on black powder firearms. And once again, I would say black powder like revolvers are very easy to modify in ways to shorten barrels and you know make them more effective. And of course, there are ways to learn how to use them effectively. This video is not about that though, so we are going to not talk about that anymore and get into knives. So first off, and I am irritated with myself, but I totally forgot to bring my only non-steel knife that I was going to show in this video. So for sake of conversation, I'm just gonna have my uh, Paragon Phoenix out for this example. But the first one that I would say, and once again, things you have to consider are you know where you're going and what your needs are. So sometimes non-steel, tools, not necessarily knives, like G10 tools, um, such as the Black Triangle Group Senka, are things that I carry, and 
um, are reasonably effective enough. So once again, this is a Paragon Phoenix, but the Senka is a really effective tool. I'm gonna roll in some pictures of it here, but I would definitely recommend it. And I do get a lot of questions about the Senka um, from Black Triangle um, or from BTG or Black Triangle Group, but they make a number of G10 tools. And in my opinion, um, like I don't dislike them, but they are a little bit on the pricey side for a G10 tool, but they are good. And I will say the nice thing if you do get something from Black Triangle Group, like it ships with a sheath, a belt mount, everything you need, and it's all non-magnetic. Like there's no metal connecting hardware. Everything has been thought through. So the nice thing about getting a Black Triangle Group knife, at least if you do get a, uh, like one of their G10 tools, is the fact that they are completely set up, ready to go. They will go through metal detectors without an issue. Um, wouldn't try to recommend putting one on it like an airplane because they'll still spot it. But uh, as far as like basic metal detectors and stuff like that, they're going to pass those every time. So anyways, that is what I would recommend for a non-knife tool. I would look at Black Triangle Group and they have a number of things. Mine, like I said, is the Senka. That's what I carry, but they also have like, I want to say it's the Midnight Creeper and that one's pretty good too. Uh, they have quite a few different options out there. All right, so that is point one and point two. Point three is going to be steel options that are likely regulated. Now, there are some people like myself that live in places like Alaska where we have very loose laws on knives. So this, what you're looking at right here would be legally classified as a gravity knife because it requires gravity to open and close it as you guys can see here like there's no like thumb studs to flick open there's no like buttons uh, or there's no like buttons that make the knife shoot out but this is still a gravity knife so this is still largely restricted in many places this is basically the same legal category as something like a balisong or butterfly knife uh, because it uses the same style like with a butterfly knife you need gravity to open the knife right and so um, that is where these legally fall into. And in this video, I'm not going to discuss why I think all of those laws are garbage because I do. But I will say things like gravity knives can be very effective for self-defense because as you can see, this is very easy to open in a pinch. And one of the nicest things about whether it's a butterfly knife like a balisong or something like this Paragon Phoenix is it's very easy for there to be a secondary or double edge. And so that means that if you hold this in an ice pick grip, you can even reverse it and get a different style of cutting. So you can have this like fully serrated top side and you can use that or you can flip it around and have that fully unserrated side for doing work. And so once again, because this is a system or a blade, I should say that's fully encapsulated by a handle, if it is double edged, like the Paragon Phoenix or the Paragon Warlock. This is fully covered, protected. It's not going to hurt you when it's in this you know, state. So anyways, that is what makes this a little bit more um, desirable for self-defense potentially. And once again, still very easy to open, close and actuate. So definitely I would recommend if you are going to use anything like a Balisong or anything like a Phoenix like this, practice with it because once again, it is not the most user friendly, but it is is pretty cool that you can you know like say you want this in a reverse grip you can't hold this like this drop it and already be in a reverse grip so kind of nifty kind of handy there's some ways once again if you practice with them that these guys can be a little bit more effective than a traditional knife and yeah Anyways, next ones up are going to be quite obviously OTFs. Now, OTFs, some people will argue that they are not reliable. But anyways, so if you maintain them, they work perfectly fine. And once again, OTFs have that very similar kind of category that the gravity knife has. And that is that because the handle fully encloses this knife, it makes it very easy to have a double-edged or at least partially double-edged knife. And so you will see things like bayonets and full-on double-edged daggers as OTFs. Yes. Now this one's a good example of that. My manticore is not quite, but as you can see, like this one has a fully um, plain bottom edge and a fully serrated top edge, and of course is a dagger. So, um, you know, these are really quite effective for being especially um, dissuaders. So if you don't really, really want to fight, if you whip one of these guys out, 
and someone's trying to do you harm, they probably will think twice before trying to mess with you because honestly, like this thing really looks like a lot of not fun to go up against, especially in an extent, you know, a lot of people buy into how scary a blade comes out. So they can dissuade people just by being merely deployed. Um, now, once again, if someone's experienced with knives, that probably won't work, but yeah. Okay, so the last one in the likely illegal category is going to be a side button or just automatics in general. So these ones are going to be side opening at least. Some of them are things like I have an auto access, so it's an access lock, but it's an automatic knife. And of course I have this side button, um, Protec SNG. Now I don't have any in this particular category of side opening autos that are particularly aggressive, but the thing that is nice about side opening autos is because they do have that button. It makes it a little bit easier in a stressful or under duress situation to deploy these. And I think that's one of the biggest things where when we talk about, especially self-defense, and this is where, in my opinion, like a lot of the kind of laws just to get rambly a little bit or on my soapbox a little bit, but you know, uh, when a lot of people say, you know, like this knife and this knife, like this is an evil automatic knife, right? In my opinion, if someone's already gonna do harm, it's premeditated, neither of these knives are harder to use or easier to use. But if you are a self-defender trying to defend yourself, I do, I will say that this is a little bit easier to use because if you are stressed out and you just need to whip a knife out, all you have to think about doing is pressing this button right here and it will cause the knife to open and get into a deployed state, right? So if you are a self-defender under a level of stress and someone's trying to hurt you, all you have to do is just get to that button, press it, your knife is open and now you can do whatever you need to do with that particular blade. Once again, neither of my side opening autos are particularly aggressive, so I wouldn't recommend like the SNG, at least this one, uh, for that type of situation because it's just a pretty much a standard edge, like it's a utility knife, but um, they do have merits in that regard. All right, final point that we're getting into is non or likely non-restricted blades. Now, of course, once again, you still have to check your local laws and listings to make sure that none of these, you know, fit into any type of category, but these are going to be all either fixed blades or just non or like what we call manual folding blades. So what a manual folding blade is, it means that there is no spring assist to this. There's no buttons to press. There's no gravity. Like you can't use gravity to open this. Actually, this one you probably could because the detent is weak enough, but you know, logistically speaking, this is not a gravity knife in the traditional sense of the terms. And so for me, the first one up, or I should say the first ones up would have to be anything that has an Emerson wave. Now, luckily for me, or luckily for, I guess, many people that are wanting to be self-defenders um, or wanting to defend themselves, there are a lot of flavors of Emerson Wave knives out there. Of course, these two in particular are actual Emerson or Emerson collaborations, but there are um, plenty of things like Spyderco's. Um, one that I typically recommend is the Spyderco Matriarch. Um, that one has, or you can get it with the Emerson Wave feature. And the reason why I think that this is like, if you have to go with a manual folding knife for self-defense due to legal reasons, the Emerson folder or the Emerson wave, sorry, is going to be one of your fastest options because so long as you practice with it, it is one of those that the Emerson wave is designed to catch on the inseam of your pocket and, you know, catch on it. And as you pull the knife out, it grabs your pocket and opens. And so if you do this motion really quickly, then it opens the knife completely. Now, once again, you still want to practice with this system and setup. This is something that, once again, you know, the nice thing about the automatic knife, especially like the side openers, is all you need to know is just hit that button and the blade will come out. This you do need to practice with. So if you feel like you really need an Emerson Wave featured knife for self-defense, practice with it, get comfortable with it, so that you know if you need to actually use it, you know how to grip your knife, how to hold your knife, because once again, you know, traditionally speaking, when I go to like grab a knife out of my pocket, I usually grab it, you know, something like this, one of my fingers is almost always over the spine of the blade. Well, if you're trying to use it for a wave feature, obviously you cannot have any of your fingers over the spine of the blade or the wave will not open, right? So you do need to practice with how you're gonna open your knife or pull it out of your pocket 
socket so that it will open. So the wave feature is very good, reasonably easy, reasonably intuitive, um, and there are a lot of knives, whether it's Spydercos, Emersons, Kershaws, there are tons of knives. There's even some knives that have illegally pirated the wave feature, which, you know, is an argument of its own, but for the sake of this conversation is good. There's even a lot of ways um, people will modify like traditional Spydercos. You can put a little zip tie uh, right on like this portion, like the very end portion of your Spyderco that doesn't have a wave on it and uh, turn that into a wave feature. So all you do is you just take a zip tie, tie it like as tight as you can, like, you know, clamp it down as hard as that zip tie will go. You snip off the end, you know, maybe kind of smooth it off and you can have like an impromptu wave feature on many non-wave knives. So that is another thing to think about if you are considering a knife specifically for self-defense. And once again, there are within, you know, um, manual folders, there are a number of designs that do work well. The Matriarch is good. A lot of the Salt series have fully serrated blades. And so you're just really looking for anything that has a, you know, really good uh, blade that will, you know, bite and work well. So, you know, there's a lot of knives that will do it and uh, it doesn't necessarily require a specific, like fully serrated design. It just can't help. Anyways, um, aside from that, I would say probably the next best option is going to be anything that has an axis or ball bearing style um, action to it. And that is because similar to um, gravity knives, ball bearing and axis locks can be very easy to open so long as you hold these uh, the lock back. Like say you pull this out of your knife or pull this out of your knife. You pull this out of your pocket and you want to, you know, open it, you pull it out, you hold back on your ball bearing and then you flick it open. So it can be very quick, very rapidly accessible. Even a spidey flick can work well. So those are the types of manual folders you want to look at um, if you are looking that way. Once again, lastly, two, just so they aren't left out, is fixed blades. Now fixed blades can get tricky, especially because of blade length restrictions. And some people or some countries or local laws or whatever are just dumb, but so you do want to be careful with those. But if not, you know, fixed blades are tried and true. Once again, a lot of people have brought it up in the comments in past defensive knife videos where the nice thing about a fixed blade is once you draw out of its sheath, it's there. You know, there's no fumbling or deploying. It's very similar to other, you know, very, uh, very sure ways of deploying a blade. So fixed blades definitely have their merit. And once again, as you can see with my half face blades, Extremis Mark I, this guy has a very aggressive recurved blade with a bit of a spear point for the tip. So once again, it's very, very defensive styled blade that will bite very deep into things and cut well. So there are definitely plenty of fixed blades out there. I will say definitely check your local laws on double edged you know uh, knives because there are a lot of fixed blades out there that are also double-edged but those may or may not be illegal oftentimes if you're dealing with a lot of garbage laws then double-edged will be out of the question however once again things like the extremist mark one are not double-edged though you can i've been told send this back to half face blades and they will sharpen this upper spine however for me i find it just fine i don't really have any issues with it being non-sharpened um, and personally in my opinion for those people wondering you know on like double-edged tools um, at least when it comes to things like fixed blades and such uh, for self-defense at minimum uh, I don't really think that having a sharp, sharpened upper edge is that important. The only thing I like when it comes to sharpened upper edges is if that upper edge is a different style. So you can see, like I said, fully serrated, fully non-serrated. That is the type of upper edge I like if I'm going to go with an upper edge styled knife. Um, as for me, if it's something like this Extremis, uh, a, a very narrow or shallow swedge is going to when you like thrust it or stab it into something it's going to pierce equally deep because realistically it that like extra cutting factor from having a sharpened upper edge just isn't that important when you go to put force and stab behind something you know like or when you put force behind something or go to stab something it's just not that important the swedge is um already doing i'd say like 90 percent of a job that the upper edge would do if it was there so anyways that's my opinion uh, who knows i might be wrong but um that is uh, kind of my experience and opinion 
with defensive knives. Hopefully you've enjoyed this rundown. I know it's been a long video, but I wanted to really hit these four points because I think that they are valuable. And once again, when we talk about self-defense as a whole, there are definitely better options out there. I just try to express them at the beginning of the video just so that people are aware that, you know, you have a lot more option, even if you can't have, you know, something like my nice Glock 19, you know, I mean, like that's, what you would want to have, you know, like that's nice, that's the objective. But even if you can't have something like a red dot optic, you know, um, even if you can't have something nice like a red dot optic uh, Glock 19, you know, there's a lot of other things out there that will get the job done in a pinch. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm